This video is a remix of a Catherine Kosak video. This is a is a uh, exercise that she proposed. Uh, the The question of medical malpractice is a is an important issue in the American landscape. Uh, malpractice lawsuits are expensive and they cause other problems. In a study of 128 randomly selected medical malpractice lawsuits. It's found that 856 of them were later dropped. Now what we want to do here is to construct a 99% confidence interval to estimate what the uh, proportion of the medical malpractice lawsuits uh, that are dropped or dismissed. Uh, Professor Kosak lists steps for both confidence intervals and hypothesis tests. And in both of those, the first step is to state the random variable and the population parameter in words. The population parameter is easy. We're going to call that P, and it's going to be the proportion of the medical malpractice lawsuits that are dropped or dismissed. Of course, we'll be able to calculate that for our sample, but we're interested in the proportion of all uh, medical malpractice lawsuits that are dropped or dismissed. The random variable is actually a, a, a categorical variable. It's the question whether uh, is, an, is an individual um, malpractice lawsuit, does it get, get dropped or or dismissed or not. So it's kind of a yes no kind of thing. This is a binomial sort of phenomenon. Now if we we're doing a hypothesis test then step two would be to state the hypotheses. But uh, since there is no hypothesis associated with the confidence interval, step two is to state and check the assumptions. We want this to be based on a random sample, and of course in this problem it specifically states that a random sample was selected. So we want to be assured that the properties of a binomial experiment are satisfied here. So for that to happen we need to, to assure that either the lawsuit was dropped or it was not dropped. I mean it is a binomial phenomenon here, and of course that's the case. A second property of a binomial experiment is that the probability of being dropped or dismissed is the same for all lawsuits. So that's an assumption that we're making. Third, that the trials are independent. That is, that one case is independent, that the decision whether to drop or dismiss one case is independent of any of the other cases. And finally, that there are a fixed number of trials. In this case, uh, we're looking at a random sample of 128 of them, and that's a fixed number. Now that, we're, that we feel that we're really looking at a binomial experiment, often a binomial distribution can be approximated by a normal distribution, and so we want to uh, establish that, that the conditions for that to occur are satisfied. So that's a, a matter of showing that N the 128, the 1,228 times the proportion of the population is greater than than five. Of course, we don't know the proportion of the population, and also that the uh, that n times q, the prob the proportion of those that are not dropped, uh, is also greater than five. Now we can't exactly do that. So we'll test the next best thing. We can find the proportion of our population, uh, of our sample, I'm sorry, times n, and check to see if that's bigger than 5. That would at least give us some indication. And, uh, <clears throat> the, okay, so we can do those two calculations, which we'll do in a, in a script in a minute. So I'll build the script in, a, in an RStudio console. When I write a script, I like to put all the given information at the beginning and then show how to use that given information in calculations throughout the script. So our sample size is 1,228, and I'm going to assign that to an object called n. So that's our sample size. 
of those 1,228 cases, 856 of them were dropped or dismissed. So that's essentially all of the given information. It's also true that we are looking for a 99% confidence uh, level. So let's put that confidence level here. Confidence level is 99%. So P hat is going to be the proportion of the sample that is dropped or dismissed. So of course this is a point estimate for the population proportion. But we know for sure that we've got some sampling error here. This, uh, this proportion could easily be above or below the, uh, the population proportion just because of the sample that we've taken. So we could also easily find the, the proportion of the sample that is not dropped uh, or dismissed and we'll call that Q hat. Now remember when we were checking our assumptions we wanted to assure that an approximation of the normal distribution can be used for this uh, binomial distribution. So what we needed to know was what n times p hat is and what n times q hat is. Both of those, that was the best approximation that we could have for p and q, <coughs> and both of those needed to be greater than 5. So let's run that, that much of the script and see what we've got. So down here in the, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, so let's run that script, and we discover that sure enough, <coughs> n times p hat is 856, <coughs> and n times q hat is 372, so that condition is easily satisfied. So we want to find the standard error for the distribution of sample proportions. We really need to know what p and q are. We don't know that, so we're going to use the best information we've got. We'll use p hat and q hat, and remember that the standard error. So we really wanted the square root of p times q divided by n. Uh, so this is the best approximation that we can get for that standard error. So x is our random variable. It's the number of uh, of cases that are dismissed or or dropped and the possibility out of 1,228 is anywhere from 0 to 1,228 and so there'd be a, a binomial probability distribution uh, for that information. We're going to s consider every possible sample of size 1,228 taken from this probability distribution and look at the proportion of each of those and consider the distribution of proportion uh, the distribution of those sample proportions. We already checked the assumptions to assume that this could be approximated by a by a normal distribution. So this distribution of sample proportions will be normally distributed with a mean of the true population proportion and a standard deviation of the square root of p times q divided by n. Now since this is a normal distribution we could look at any value there and look at its z-score and so this distribution could be standardized to a standard normal distribution with a of course that means that the mean is 0 and the standard deviation is 1. When we're doing a hypothesis test we start in this distribution and move in this direction through the uh, uh, <clears throat> three, di three distribution diagram. When we're doing a confidence interval we start here and move back this way. In this problem we're interested in a 99 percent confidence interval. So we want to find the z score so that z here and minus z here would leave us with 99% in here. So the area in these tails would need to be everything else to add up to be 99%. In this case, the area in those tails is going to need to be uh, 1%. We want to find this value right here. Okay, that 
that Z value. We want to find that Z value so that we know that that, that would be how many standard deviations we need to be away uh, to assure that we've got 99% uh, within that many standard deviations from the point. So let's return to our script. What we want to do is find the Z value for the 99% confidence level. We've already said what our confidence level is here. So we can start to, to work on a script in the following way. I'm going to call an object tail for 1 minus the confidence level. That is what is the area of these two red areas. So if I take A and take that tail, the area in the two pieces, okay, that, that is these two red areas, and divide that by two, then that's going to be the area in this upper tail. So if I take the tail divided by two, it's going to be this green area that's up here. And we want to know this Z value. We'll be able to find that because 1 minus A would be the area below the value that we want to look at. So Q norm of 1 minus A will tell us that Z value. And that will be a Z value really is a number of standard deviations away from the mean. So it's the number of standard deviations for a 99% confidence level. So we can calculate a margin of error by saying the number of standard deviations away times the standard deviation in that distribution. Now remember earlier in the script we called SE the standard deviation of this distribution and our best approximation for that was the square root of p hat times q hat divided by n. And we had calculated that earlier in this line right here. Okay. So we'll calculate the lower bound of our confidence interval as p hat minus that margin of error, and our upper bound as p hat plus that margin of error. Now I'll need to ask R to print those out for me, so I'll just ask what the lower bound and what the upper, ba upper bound is. Um, and then we'll highlight all of that and run the code, and it will tell us that the lower bound was uh, <clears throat> 0.66 and the upper bound was 66% uh, and the upper bound was 73%. So this confidence interval might be written in one of three ways. P, the population proportion, is going to be greater than, than this lower bound and less than that upper bound that was calculated in the script. Or sometimes it's written as a, in interval notation, the lower value up to, but not including this upper value, or it's sometimes written as the p hat plus or minus the margin of error. So these values were calculated in the following way. This was the p hat minus the margin of error is less than the population proportion, which is less than p hat plus the margin of error, or the p hat mar minus the margin of error is that number, comma, p hat plus the margin of error is that number, so we're using interval notation, or p hat plus or minus the margin of error. Those three different ways are used to distinguish the uh, confidence interval. Okay, that's it for this video.